All right, Blazer fans, it's time to welcome Trent Dilfer to Birmingham, a former Super Bowl champion quarterback and amazing high school head coach, takes his chance at the college level. And I'll be honest with you, this is not a head coaching hire that I am buying yet. I do think that Trent Dilfer, with some experience, can get this team with UAB uh, really back up to the top of their new conference but I think it's going to take some time. However, will Trent Dilfer and the Blazers prove me wrong and be a very competitive team, if not a sneaky option to make the conference championship game in their new conference, the American Athletic? Or is this team going to take a little bit under Trent Dilfer to really build back up? What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate, and welcome to my channel, previewing predicting all 133 FBS-level college football teams this summer. It means I'm doing your favorite team, so hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you know when that video gets uploaded. But there are more ways than that that you can help me support my channel. You're doing one right now by watching the video. You can do more by liking, commenting, sharing, and anything else you're willing and able to do to help me support my channel. So UAB Blazers, another team we're moving on to doing in the American Athletic. One of the new teams coming from Conference USA. How will they fare in 2023? Well, we're going to go through it right now, but I got to tell you how we do it first. We're going to go through a roster overview and look at who the team lost, who's coming back, and who's coming in through the transfer portal and recruiting class, as well as taking a look at the 2023 Blazer football schedule, and we'll give it a game-by-game -game preview and prediction. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the UAB Blazers for 2023. All right, when we take a look at the quarterback position, it's, of course, the most important position on the field. Dylan Hopkins, leading passer, leading quarterback last year, is gone at 1,913 yards, 10 touchdowns to four interceptions last season. Also 116 rush yards, a couple of rushing touchdowns tacked on there as well. Pretty solid option for the Blazers over his tenure there, but his time with UAB is done. So Jacob Zeno, who was Hopkins' backup for most of his uh, for most of Hopkins' career, uh, 700 or at least by the time Jacob Zeno got to UAB, uh, you guys I'm sure know what I mean. 721 yards. Five touchdowns and three interceptions, 94 rush yards and a touchdown for Zeno last season. Definitely some mechanical things that he can improve on, but nonetheless should be a solid option at quarterback. However, I definitely think this quarterback battle is one that is up in the air because you also have Landry Liddy and Campbell Trace. That are some quarterback options coming over through the transfer portal. So really, I think it's up to anyone's game. Zeno's been with the program for the longest, uh, but again, it is an entirely new system. So it is up to Trent Dilfer, really. I think it should be Jacob Zeno, but who knows if Liddy or Trace is going to be able to uh, walk in there and win the quarterback battle. Uh, I, I guess we'll find out here in a little bit, won't we? Running back room. Well, you do lose a star back here. One of the nation's leading rushers. I think he was the leading rusher in the nation last season is Dwayne McBride on 233 carries, had 1,713 yards. That's almost seven and a half yards per carry and 19 rushing touchdowns. He is a phenomenal talent out of the backfield. Uh, he, he also... Uh, just, just, just a phenomenal talent, speed, athleticism, strength. He has all of it. Phenomenal talent that you are losing in Dwayne McBride. However, your second leading rusher does come back and he almost had a thousand yards last year. That was Jermaine Brown kind of got lost in Dwayne McBride hype, 948 yards and eight touchdowns for him last year, as well as some transfers, Isaiah Jacobs and Demetrius battle both transfer into this program to help boost up this running back room. When you take a look at the wide receiver position, well, your leading receiver last year in Trey Shropshire will be gone, 923 yards and six touchdowns, but you do get a lot more coming back. Uh, Tejan Palmer, Samario Rudolph, TJ Jones, and Fred Ferrier are all going to be coming back for this team. Uh, Palmer, Rudolph, Jones, and Ferrier, your second, third, fourth, and sixth leading receivers last season, respectively. And you get a transfer coming over from Indiana in Malachi Holt Bennett. Uh, that's a three-star transfer according to 24-7 Sports. Tight end room, what are we working with? Uh, well, Bryce Damius, Terrell McDonald, and Dallas Payne all return uh, for uh, this uh, tight end group. Uh, Damas, uh, apologize if I say last names or first names or any names wrong, I apologize. Uh, but Bryce was the team's fifth leading receiver last year. It should be that featured tight end again. And on the offensive line, Kadeem Telfort, Quincy McGee, Matthew uh, Trahern do leave, but Brady Wilson, Trey Badosky come back, as well as Will Parker is a transfer coming in to this program. Uh, he is coming over from the ranks of Tennessee, former three-star out of high school. So there's the UAB offense. When we take a look at the UAB defense, it, it's definitely been a 
pretty solid defense over the years for U UAB. How will it be in 2023? Well, defensive line, they don't lose a whole lot. Isaiah Forte is gone. I uh, had 28 tackles and sack last year, but that's about it. Pretty much everyone else does come back. Drew uh, Tuazama uh, will be coming back. Had 33 tackles, five sacks last year. The five sacks led the team last season. Uh, one of the best names in college football, Fish McWilliams. He comes back. Tariq Howard and Kevin Penn uh, will all be coming back to this defensive line in 2023. In the linebacking room, okay, this is where you start to lose some pretty solid talent here as Noah Wilder, Keel Sanders, Tyler Taylor, Raynard Ellis. Those are some really solid names. Wilder and Taylor. Uh, were your top two tacklers last season. Wilder broke triple digits at 109. Taylor at 72 with a sack and a half. Uh, Ellis had 53 tackles, a sack and a half to his name there as well. Sanders had three sacks, 36 tackles. You're losing a lot of talent off of this linebacking unit, but still some good talent does come back. Uh, My Michael Fairbanks had 43 tackles, a sack and a half. Jackson Bratton and Reese Collier are going to be some other names that return in the linebacking unit uh, for this defense. And you also get a transfer coming over in Desmond Little. That should give a boost to the linebacking unit. On the defensive back side of things, oh man, oh man, does a lot of talent leave this defensive back room. I got five names to read off for you. Jalen Key was the team's third leading tackler, also tied for the team lead with three interceptions with Grayson Cash, who was also gone. He also had seven passes defended last season. Devodrick Bynum led the team with nine passes defended he is gone uh, and you also lose some other key guys like will uh baller who was a top 10 tackler for this team and the first guy on the list starling thomas who was a pretty solid talent as well 14 passes defended last season that led the team my apologies so bynum second on the team third on the team actually just keep going down the list uh, But starling thomas led the team with 14 passes defended amazing talent there Second on the team with 10 pass defended was Mac McWilliams. He comes back as well as Keandre Swoops, Damon Miller, and Damian Miller as well. So this is going to be a pretty interesting year for UAB football. You got an entirely new coaching staff. Trent Dilfer is in it at head coach. His offensive coordinator is Alex Mortensen. Defensive coordinator is uh, Sion uh, Taufo Ao. Apologies again if I said last name wrong. Here's your schedule for the Blazers. Any game in uh, any game that's underlined is a home game. Any game on the road is in italics or the slant to text. Any game in green is a game I think the Blazers win easily. Game in yellow, all right, it's a good competitive game, but UAB is able to win. Red is a loss. You're going to start off 2023 with a win against North Carolina A&T. Don't think there will be much question about that. But then you got the next game on the road against Georgia Southern. That is where Clay Helton currently sits as head coach. That was a Georgia Southern team that took a pretty good leap there in 2022. And 2023, I think, is going to be even better. I think Georgia Southern has all the necessary pieces it needs to beat uh, UAB. First game in, against an FBS opponent, I do not think goes the way of Trent Dilfer and company. I believe that the Blazers will end up losing that first game against Georgia Southern, what I think is going to be a pretty solid team out of the Sun Belt Conference this season. Same thing with Louisiana. I think Louisiana is going to be a very solid team out of the Sun Belt Conference this season. However, I am not as high on Louisiana this season. I do think it's still going to be a pretty solid team, but there's a lot of talent that's going to be gone off of that team that they would have liked to have this year. A lot of talent leaving through the portal as well. I think UAB is going to pick up a pretty close, pretty uncomfortable win here uh, for Trent Dilfer's first season. I think defensive intensity going to make the difference there. UAB known for that. I do not think that's going to go away under Trent Dilfer. Uh, so that is a win in my book for the UAB Blazers. And we can skip past the next two pretty easily. You're not beating the Georgia Bulldogs, plain and simple. That's one of, if not the most talented roster in America and back to back national championship holders. And you're not going to beat Tulane on the road either. Too much talent with that uh, Green Wave team. Michael Pratt coming back. That defense should still be excellent this season as well. That's a two-lane team. I really, really like to get back to a New Year's Six bowl game, much like another team that's later on the schedule. That is a loss for Trent Dilfer and company, but I do think you're going to be able to beat South Florida. South Florida is a team that, again, definitely is an interesting team when you take a look in the uh, American ranks, a team that I do think has the necessary pieces to take some steps in the right direction. However, how big of steps are those going to be? That is definitely an interesting question to try to answer. And I don't know that they're going to be up to the standard of the UAB Blazers, especially with that offense. I don't know that it'll be able to outmatch some of the physicality that UAB will bring on the defensive end this season. 
So I do think that's a win. So starting out three and three, not a bad start for Trent Dilfer and company, but you got some very tough games in the second half of the schedule. And I think, uh, and again, one of them comes against UTSA. Frank Harris is coming back. And even though Zachary Franklin is going to be off to Ole Miss, that's still a very talented wide receiver group. The defense has a lot of very good pieces as well. I see UMass, or excuse me, not UMass. Don't know where I got that from. UAB losing on the road to UTSA, former Conference USA opponents there. And then when you take a look at this Memphis game right here, I think it's another game that UAB is going to end up dropping. Memphis uh, is going to be very, very talented this year. When you look, you've got Seth Hennigan coming in at quarterback, or not coming in, coming back at quarterback. There's a lot of talent around him. Uh, there's a lot of transfers coming into that program defensively. I think that's going to be a pretty solid team there as well. So all in all, I do think Memphis is going to be able to take it to the UAB Blazers. Uh, UAB now on a two-game losing streak that I do think they end against the FAU Owls. And Florida Atlantic, to me, another very, very interesting team entering 2023. You got Casey Thompson coming in at quarterback. There's a lot of returning talent to that team as well to make them a pretty solid team on paper. But when you look a little deeper, I do think that that's a team that lacks the necessary depth to be able to compete in the American Athletic Conference. I think their ones, their twos can be pretty solid for them. Again, Casey Thompson's got a lot of talent around him. There's some really good pieces on that Florida Atlantic defense. And not to mention, you got a really good group of five head coach coming in and Tom Herman, a guy who thrives in a group of five scenario but i do think F fau is going to have some games this year where it struggles and i think uab is going to be one of them i think by this point uab has found some things offensively that work really really well and some things on defense that they're going to be able uh to just take advantage of when they end up playing the F fau owls so that is a win for me in my book against the uh florida atlantic owls but then going on the road to play navy i see as a loss there are going to be some games this year that UAB may not be favored to or, 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 or may be favored to win and they're going to end up losing and I think Navy is a team that is improving in the in the ranks of the American Athletic Conference that's a team that is getting a new head coach could be under a new system there as well Navy is a team that I do like in the long haul with that head coach they have his name is escaping my mind right now apologies for that but Navy a team that I like coming in to 2023, maybe not to make a bowl game, but to make steps in the right direction as a program. And I think they take it to UAB. They get the, uh, what I'm going to call upset win. I don't know if many people would see that one coming. I think Navy beats UAB. Uh, however, I do think UAB going to be able to bounce back and beat Temple here. Look, Temple's got a couple key areas and where they need to improve. One of which is their defense, which drastically needs to improve, and their offensive line. In order to protect their new star quarterback in EJ Warner, he even has some things in his game he has to improve in as well. But all in all, when you look at Temple, that's a very talented team. That's a team that's got a lot of returning talent offensively. There are some good pieces defensively as well. I just think UAB may be a little bit too physical with some of the talent that they have offensively. I think they're going to learn from a lot of their mistakes from that Navy game. They're going to come out, get a, I don't know what just happened there. I just hit my mic 90 degrees. I apologize for whatever sound that may have made, but Temple I see as a win for UAB, but I see North Texas as a loss too dynamic of a running game there at uh, North Texas. And I think that's a team in the mean green that are going to be rolling into the postseason this year do not think they're gonna uh i do not think they're gonna take uab lightly and i do not think the blazers are gonna walk away with the win in that game so all in all with everything being said trent dilfer's first year is five and seven i do not think that is a bad first year i am not buying this head coaching hire quite yet uh, uh again I, I think the talent on this team it is going to be the very, very solid. And I know me saying not buying the head coaching hire, but Nate, you have this team at five and seven. That's not that bad of a record at all. I definitely think it could be a lot worse for this team. Trent Dilfer's definitely got some stuff to prove. Uh, transferring over from the high school to the FBS level is not easy at all. So we'll see how UAB does in 2023. But I got him sitting just shy of a bowl game here at five and seven. That's going to do it for my thoughts on the Blazers. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, Remember to play hard, but tailgate harder. See all you guys in the next video. Goodbye.